Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? When it comes to Sonic the Hedgehog, some people immediately think of Sega's 16-bit console era. But in the mid-90s, he and his cohorts found themselves on an unlikely platform. This is the Sonic & Knuckles collection, released in March 1997 for Microsoft's Windows 95. It includes Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles, and, predictably, Sonic 3 & Knuckles, all of which had originally been written for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive in 1994. Its system requirements listed a 100 MHz 486 DX4 or 75 MHz Pentium processor, 8 MB of RAM, and a Sound Blaster 16 or better sound card. But meeting or exceeding these requirements didn't guarantee a good gameplay experience, which we'll get to in a bit. These days, we'd expect the games to simply be the original ROMs running in emulation, but the collection saw its titles get fully ported to Windows by Sega's PC Software Division, which was formed in 1996. Doing these sorts of ports was new to Sega at the time, and prompted in part by the struggles the company's Saturn console faced in the marketplace. Installing the game is relatively quick, and it only takes up a few megabytes of disk space. Even though it runs from the hard drive, it annoyingly checks for the presence of the CD-ROM as a form of basic copy protection, though this could be bypassed with some careful config file editing. Running it presents you with a launcher screen where you could pick from the three titles, after which the game opens in a window. It supports two-player mode, but the default keyboard controls are annoying at best. Each player is mapped to opposite sides of the keyboard, which makes for a cramped gaming session. Bizarrely, player one is set to use the arrow keys to move and the main enter key to jump, but thankfully the controls can be remapped pretty easily, and the software supports some game pads and joysticks. Unfortunately, I found game performance to be hit and miss. On some period hardware, it plays fine, but others can experience choppy results. My ThinkPad 300E, for example, well exceeds the minimum requirements, but it drops frames frequently. When the game works, though, the video quality is pristine. It runs at 60 frames per second, and the image is super sharp, with vibrant colors. The original console version looks like a blurry mess by comparison, especially over composite video. But one thing I think the console does better is sound. The Sonic & Knuckles collection used a fully synthesized soundtrack. Instead of simply playing back recordings of the Mega Drive's music, you had the choice of using FM synth or MIDI. The quality of the soundtrack, and just how it sounded overall, was thus highly dependent on your sound card and its capabilities. In many cases, this meant that even in FM synth mode, the music came across noticeably different than the console version many were familiar with. The MIDI version generally sounded even more bland, though if you had a high-end PCM unit like a Roland Sound Canvas, you could get a better, but still different, experience. It's also important to note that while the gameplay was overall the same, some of the background music was replaced. The most notable examples of this are the themes for Launch Base, Carnival Night, and Ice Cap Zones.
No official reason for these changes was given, though there are a few popular theories, ranging from licensing issues centered around the belief that Michael Jackson was involved in the console version soundtrack, to more practical reasons like the use of audio samples, which the console hardware could handle fine, but some sound cards couldn't reproduce simultaneously with MIDI instruments. Another quirk of the collection is how it plays on modern systems. Specifically, it doesn't. On newer hardware or in virtual machines, it just kind of loses its mind. Thankfully, there's a fan-made patch program from 2015 called Sega PC Reloaded that can install and modify the game so it works correctly, and even provides some additional options, like enabling the debug menu or allowing you to supply your own music files. Finally, the CD-ROM includes a bonus screensaver, which is really just a slideshow of images and artwork from several Sonic games, along with the original music and sound effects. Yep, they got the music right for the screensaver, but not the game itself. Sonic & Knuckles Collection wasn't the only console title that Sega ported to the PC. Sonic CD, Virtua Fighter 2, and Echo the Dolphin all made an appearance, among others. And while the game certainly has some rough spots, it's ultimately very playable and the image quality is hard to beat. It was never an expensive game, originally selling for about $30 US, and got re-released in 2000 as a bargain bin title by Expert Software. I found my copy at a used bookstore for 3 bucks, but these days it's considered abandonware and can be downloaded from the Internet Archive. And with the Sega PC Reloaded patch, it's a surprisingly fun way to play what's arguably one of the best titles in the Sonic lineup provided you can stand the music. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.